I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied and today we shall discuss about the cooling tower performance. In the last class we have talked about the classification of cooling towers and also we have discussed about the you know analysis the heat transfer process considering different types of cooling towers. Now, whenever any mechanical device or any other you know device works, we need to know the performance of that particular device both qualitatively as well as quantitatively. Now, there are many parameters which are used to measure the quantitative performance of any mechanical component or device. Similarly, if we need to know the performance qualitatively we also can measure a few parameters, we can calculate. Now, for the cooling towers, whenever a designer is designing a cooling tower and that cooling tower is installed in a power plant, we also need to know what would be the performance of that cooling tower. If the performance deteriorates with time, then eventually the performance of the plant will deteriorate. So, today we shall discuss a few parameters which are directly related to the cooling tower performance. So, what are the what are those parameters? If we can write here the parameters which are are the number one approach, number two is range, number three is certainly efficiency. So, these three parameters if we can estimate or if we can you know measure these three parameters, we can tell about the or we can predict about the performance of a cooling tower. Now, we all know that efficiency is one of the most important parameters typically used to quantify the performance of any you know mechanical component or device. Now, today we shall discuss about what is approach, what is range and what is efficiency of course, in the context of the operation of a cooling tower. Now, before going to discuss or define all these three parameters, let us briefly you know recall the heat transfer mechanism inside the cooling tower and essentially if we recall we have discussed that cooling tower is a heat exchanger in which water that comes out from the condenser or from a condenser which is having high temperature and that water will be again pumped back to the condenser and you know reduction in temperature or you know that of that particular of, of that water. So, the water that comes out from the condenser needs to be you know cool down and that you know process is uh, in that process is occurring in a cooling tower and the main purpose of using a cooling tower is to you know save the water or coolant. So, that the same coolant can be recycled back for the uh, you know heat transfer from this flowing steam. Now, if we recall
this is cold water basin and through this opening areas ambient air is drawn into the cooling tower and we have discussed for the mechanical type or mechanical you know draft cooling tower there are two different you know sub classifications we can have one fan which is installed at the base of the tower and that is called force draft so basically we can forcefully allow air to go inside the tower and here we are having fill special structure and in between this structure baffles are provided we shall discuss today the need of this these baffles and steam so the you know this is the flow direction of water and air will air flow will be in the opposite direction so this is the air flow and this air will eventually go out so this is air flow now we have discussed about both natural draft and mechanical draft towers in the last class what is happening the ambient air that is you know drawn into the tower either by using an induced fan which is which will be located at the at the top of the tower or if we you know forcefully allowed air to go inside the tower by using a force draft fan the air is unsaturated so this is unsaturated air now this air is going the air travels through the special structure that is fill and in between two fi two fills baffles are placed baffles are placed only to you know alter the movement of the air flow so had we not installed all these baffles over here air flow would have been more or less uniform but by placing all these baffles we can alter the you know flow of air while that air passes through this particular structure it is you know these baffles are placed inside the fill structure purposefully i'll be discussing today now hot water is coming from top and this hot water distribution as i told you in the last class that sometimes you know hot water this hot water distribution so if i so this is you know hot water distribution so it is depending on the tower configuration sometimes we use this hot water you know a designer prefers to use this hot water distribution system to spray water otherwise water also can come from the top so that is up to the designer so this is the hot water and so basically do these two streams we have discussed in the last class that these two stream will mix intimately 
and that particular mixing will in will will uh, promote both heat and mass transfer. And it is because of this mass transfer you know water will be you know cool down further because this is evaporative cooling. So, as water evaporates latent heat will be taken from the water and its temperature will reduce further and will be getting more cooling. Question is this air is travelling from the bottom part towards the top certainly the air will be in you know when air will be in contact with the air water at the bottom then evaporation will start air will go up further and as water evaporates that water vapor moves along the air and eventually air will be moist. So, when first air is in contact with water at the bottom water will evaporate water temperature will reduce and that water vapor will move along with the air further up and eventually after traveling certain distance the air that was really unsaturated will be now saturated. If air becomes saturated then there will be no further evaporative cooling because that time air will not be having capacity to absorb any further water molecules water vapor. So, basically if we consider that that is also you know that also depends on the designer if the incoming air gets saturated in the mid wave of its travel towards off then that saturated air will be again further in contact with hot air towards the upper part of the field and eventually we will be getting hot and moist air that we have you know discussed in the last class. So, this is hot and moist air. So, question is the water can be cooled because of this evaporating cooling up to a temperature and that is the wet bulb temperature of the incoming ambient air. Because if air becomes saturated no further cooling will be there due to evaporation. So, that means as I said that intimate mixing of these two streams promotes both heat and mass transfers. Now, though air is unsaturated, but in the course of the flow of air, air will be saturated and then no further you know water molecule absorption by the air will not be possible and hence evaporative cooling will be reduced or evaporative cooling will be 0. So, that means, we can reduce the temperature of water or we can cool the water that is spread by this distribution system up to a temperature and that is the wet bulb temperature of the adiabatic temperature or wet bulb temperature of the you know. So, incoming uh, ambience air. So, this evaporative cooling will continue until air becomes saturated and that means water can be cooled up to the temperature which is the wet bulb temperature. Wet 
of the ambient air. Now, from this you know discussion, we shall define what is called approach. So, now consider if the hot water temperature is T 1 and temperature that will be available at the cold water basin is T 2, then perhaps this is the range of the cooling tower, because we need to get cold water temperature, the temperature would be T 2, when hot water having temperature T 1 is spread over the field structure in this cooling tower. So, cooling tower range is the difference between the temperature of water that comes out from the condenser which is also inlet water temperature at the cooling tower. And cold water temperature at the cooling tower exit. So, this is called cooling tower range. So, you can see this cooling tower range R is essentially T 1 minus T 2 based on the configuration that we have discussed today. Now, question is what would be approach? Is it really possible to get you know T 2? Though we are designing to get the temperature of you know cold water would be T 2 for the temperature which is having temp which is having temperature T 1 at the inlet of this cooling tower, but this is not possible to get T 2 because of this fact that incoming unsaturated air will be having certain capacity to absorb water molecules as it you know moves through the field structure, because after certain you know uh, as the incoming air start moving towards up, that particular air will be saturated and once it becomes saturated no further evaporative cooling will be possible. That means, no matter if we design the cooling tower, if we design several components of this cooling tower considering the fact that this would be the range that is T 1 minus T 2, but what we will be getting in you know uh, actual T 2 that means, now we'll, we are defining cooling tower approach. What is cooling tower approach then? Cooling tower approach is you know this T C. So, basically you know we are thinking to get temperature T 2 from this cooling tower, but in reality we will not the temperature T 2 at the cooling water cold water basin. This temperature T 1 of the hot water will reduce continuously, it will reduce until the air becomes saturated and air, air will be saturated when the up to the temperature that is the wet bulb temperature of the unsaturated air or ambient air. That means, what we will be what is the approach that means, ideally if we use this ambient air 
to reduce the temperature of hot water which is having temperature T 1, we can bring the temperature of hot water up to the wet bulb temperature of the you know ambient air. So, basically T 2 which we are getting in reality that should be the you know wet bulb temperature of the ambient air, but this T 2 is greater than wet bulb temperature of the incoming air. So, what I am telling you that what we are supposed to get T 1 should be T w b t wet bulb temperature that is what we are supposed to get. Now, what we will be getting is T 1 to T 2 that is in reality. Right. So, few minutes back I said you that it is not possible to get temperature T 2 in reality because this T 2 is very critical. If we design to get T 2, then this T 2 would be actually the wet bulb temperature of the ambient air. So, when designer is designing the cooling tower, he or she is designing keeping in mind that the temperature of hot water can be reduced up to the wet bulb temperature of the ambient air. But this will not be the case because this T 2 should be always greater than T wet bulb temperature because of several reason. So, that depends on the air flow rate condition of the air which is available because maybe cooling tower when a designer is designing the cooling tower he or she is assuming that the wet bulb temperature is something uh, and in practical application practical case when the cooling tower is installed in that location maybe wet bulb temperature is has changed. So, approach is the exit temperature which is slightly greater than the wet bulb temperature. So, exit temperature of hot water from the cooling tower. or cold water temperature. Now, this T 2 should not be equal to T w b t that is T wet bulb if we need to ensure that for a given design condition cold water temperature will be equal to the wet bulb temperature then you need to go for you know very tall cooling tower. So, as I said you that it is not possible to have because of several factors like air flow rate, capacity of the cooling tower and also the wet bulb temperature when someone designed the cooling tower, he or she has designed the cooling tower considering one particular value of wet bulb temperature, but when the cooling tower has installed on that particular location maybe because of this climatological factor wet bulb temperature has changed. So, this is the approach. So, this is the cooling tower approach A. So, what is the definition? Definition is the exit temperature of hot water from the cooling tower which is supposed to be wet bulb temperature of the incoming ambient air, but in reality the exit temperature of the hot water from the cooling tower or cold water temperature is slightly higher than the w, uh, wet bulb temperature of the you know ambient air and this difference is known as approach and this is typically 6 degree to 8 degree typically. So, try to understand this is again an important performance parameter this is a this is an important parameter which can be calculated to know whether cooling tower is uh, uh, to, to, to comment on the performance of the cooling tower. So, basically you know if the difference is more than that that, that means cooling tower is not working at its design condition. Next is cooling tower efficiency. Like the efficiency of different other mechanical components, mechanical you know devices like boiler, turbine, pump etcetera, we also can define the efficiency of the cooling tower, because this is 
a very common parameter which is used to measure the or you know uh, indicate the performance of the device. So, what is cooling tower efficiency? Eta C T. So, what we have understood that though we are designing the cooling tower to get maximum possible heat transfer, but in reality we will be getting the actual heat transfer. So, the cooling tower efficiency is defined you know that is the actual cooling by the maximum possible cooling. So, we are designing this cooling tower to get the maximum possible cooling right of, of the hot water and so this is maximum possible cooling effect So, this is the ratio between actual cooling effect that we are getting from the cooling tower to the maximum possible cooling effect that we may get. So, what is the actual cooling we are getting and what is the maximum possible cooling right. So, try to understand that we are getting T 1 minus T 2 and what would be the maximum possible cooling right. So, that is you know if we go back to the previous slide that is T w minus T b t T w b t. So, that is the uh, approach. So, we never can approach the wet bulb temperature in a cooling tower of the water that is you know entering in the cooling tower. So, this is basically T 1 minus T w b t. So, this is how the designer has designed to you know this is the quantity based on which the designer has designed the cooling tower to get this is the maximum possible cooling effect, but we are getting this. So, the ratio is the cooling tower efficiency. Now, with this I would like to discuss two important points those are again you know indirectly related to the cooling tower efficiency. Let me tell you what are those what you have understood from today's lecture is that when these two streams are you know flowing through this field structure they are mixing intimately and as ambient air is in contact with the water stream water vapor will evaporate and the water that evaporates will move along the air in the form of a water vapor that we have discussed. So, basically you know try to understand the amount of water that is coming in and the amount of water that we are getting at the exit of the cooling tower will not be the same. Why? Because you know that certain amount of water in the form of water vapor will be carried away by the air stream. So, as the you know water molecules are getting absorbed into the air stream and that water vapor will be carried away by the air stream. So, certain amount of you know loss will be there. So, this particular there are you know several losses all these losses will directly influence the cooling tower performance. So, let us now talk about what are the losses. The first one is evaporative evaporation loss because as I said you that air which is in contact with the water that water will evaporate and that water that evaporates will be you know taken away by the air stream in the form of water vapor. water losses. So, number one is evaporation loss that we have understood because of this evaporative cooling. Second thing you know this is called drift loss. So, what is drift loss? So, second one is called drip loss. What is this? We have understood about we have understood the evaporation uh, loss of water due to evaporation right that is due to evaporative cooling. See this hot water distribution system sprays hot water over this field structure. Now, this distribution system hot water is you know uh, supplied by a pump. 
and the hot water is spread over the field structure. Now, when hot water is getting spread by this uh, distribution system, we may get water molecules of different sizes. Now, a tiny volume or tiny water droplet that water droplet will be again carried away by the water by the earth stream. So, this is called drip loss. So, relatively larger volume of water droplets will come in through this field structure due to gravity and air stream will go off, but a tiny water volume due to this you know uh, spray mechanism will be taken away by the air stream, because we have seen that either a force draft or induced draft fan will be there. Now, if it is a force draft fan then air flow because we need to maintain certain velocity of air and that velocity of air will be good enough to carry away tiny volume of water droplet along with the air stream and that is called drip loss. Now, as I said you few minutes back this baffle structures are provided you know this baffle structures are provided only to provide additional resistance to the air flow because when air is flowing through this field structure certainly because of the field there will be a resistance. Now, over and above that resistance these baffle structures are provided with this field structure and the sole purpose of providing these baffle structures is to have a change in the direction of air flow and if that is the case what will happen you know as I said you that the air stream will try to carry a tiny volume of water droplet because water droplet is still heavier. So, when there is a direction change that water you know droplets separate out by the gravity. So, the stru baffle structures are given here with the objective of you know getting heavier water molecules those are otherwise will move with the air further off those water molecules will be separated by the gravity due to this alteration in the air flow movement. So, we have understood about the drip loss as well as the purpose of providing this baffle structure and finally, another important loss that is the blow down loss. What is this? If we go back to the schematic depiction once again, you know that uh, this air will come when air is coming from ambient air that air may have some you know suspended solid. Now, that you know air, air, air is now having intimate mixing with the incoming water stream and water will be eventually collected at the basin. So, because of all this reason you know chances will be there that the water will be water will be contaminated. Now, to maintain certain a level of this concentration of you know different foreign particles or contamination typically what is done blow down is taken. So, it is because of this reason that loss of water will be there. So, we have understood that three major losses one is the loss due to evaporation, drip loss and blow down loss and all these losses you know uh, basically are losses. So, if you need to replenish all these losses we need to supply make up water and hence in cooling now cooling tower always we need to supply certain make up water otherwise the cold water which will be going back to the condenser that flow rate will reduce and condenser efficiency will be reduced and eventually that will affect the total power plant efficiency. Now, typically this evaporation loss if I write here that is 1 to 1 1.5 percent blow down loss is also 1 to 1.5 percent drip loss is really very uh, minimum. So, 
to, to, to replenish all these losses as I said make up water is supplied. So, with this now let us solve one numerical problem today. So, what is the problem? The let me read out the problem statement first steam leaving from a turbine at 0 0.15 bar having a quality 0 0.85. The exhaust steam is taken to a surface condenser where it is converted to water at 40 degree Celsius. The circulating water enters the condenser at 30 degree Celsius and leaves at 30 degree Celsius. We need to calculate the quantity of circulating water and condenser efficiency. So, let me draw the schematic first. So, if this is the condenser and So, this is cooling tower. So, this is steam flow and this is condensed. So, this is condensed right, this is the circuit exhaust steam is taken to this condenser wherein by sub circulating cooling water steam temperature is reduced, steam is converted to condensate and that hot water is taken to cooling tower and in the cooling tower again by circulating ambient air that temp you know temperature of that hot water is reduced and again pump back to the condenser. So, this is the circuit. Now, basically we it is given that steam leaving from a turbine at 0 0.15 bar right. So, if we try to draw the T S diagram. Right. We do not know. So, if we assume that this is you know steam is uh, at the inlet of the turbine steam condition we really do not know, but we are assuming that this is the case. So, if we give name 1, 2, 3, 4. So, 4 to 1 is the condensation process right. So, 4 to 1 this is the condensation process right. Now, steam leaving from the turbine at 0 0.15 bar having quality 0 0.85. So, now question is this 0.4 this point 4. So, P 4 is 0 0.15 bar x 4 equal to 0 0.85. So, this this data are given and then water. So, this is condensate that is water and that is at 40 degree Celsius right. It is also said that cold water enters at 30 degree Celsius that is T 1 and this is T 2 equal to 38 degree Celsius right that water that comes out from the condenser. So, what we can do next? We can first, so we know that 1 bar equal to 0 0.1 mega Pascal. So, it is given 0 0.15 bar. So, at 0 0.15 bar that equal to 15 kilo Pascal right T saturation at that 15 kilo Pascal equal to 53.97 degree. 
So, basically what we are trying to do you know very important point is the process condensation starts at point 4 that is the exit stream quality and that process occurs at a constant pressure eventually you are getting water at state point 1 and that water is saturated liquid corresponding to that pressure at which condensation is occurring. Now, that condensation pressure is given 15 kilo Pascal. So, T saturated or saturation temperature of that condensate at that pressure is 53.97 degree that we can take from the steam table. Okay. Now, what we have to calculate? You know, we need to know what is enthalpy because essentially you know that uh, we have to apply energy valence. So, cooling water is coming at 30 degree Celsius temperature leaving from the condenser at 38 degree Celsius temperature and that temp you know that cooling water is taking you know some amount of heat and that water circulation will reduce the enthalpy of the steam. So, the enthalpy change you need to calculate. So, first we need to know what would be the enthalpy at state point 4 that is at the exit of the turbine. So, H 4 equal to H 1 plus X 4 H F G right. So, this H 1 at 15 kilo Pascal because this is also at 15 kilo Pascal because it is what is given. Now, if we calculate this would be 225.94 plus 2372.3 into 0 0.85 and we will be getting that is 2242.395 kilo joule per kg. So, this is the enthalpy of steam at the exit of the turbine or at the inlet of the condenser. Now, another you try to understand you know it is given that uh, it is converted to water at 40 degree Celsius temperature. So, water temperature is given now when you will be calculating. So, now we can write energy balance. So, by applying energy balance what we can write? We can write mass flow rate of water into C p of water into T 2 minus T 1 right T 2 minus T 1 equal to mass flow rate of steam into H 4 minus H 1. Now, what would be this H 4 already you have calculated right what would be this H 1 because this is very important this H 1. So, it is said that steam after releasing heat comes out from the condenser as a saturated liquid having temperature 40 degree. So, while we will be calculating this H 1 instead H 1 we should write this is H at 40 degree Celsius because we are getting water. So, now if we try to write then we can write m dot w by m dot s equal to this H 4 that is 2 to 4 to 0.395 minus and H a at 40 degree Celsius that is 167.53 kilo joule per kg. Okay. So, this is kilo joule per kg divided by that is 4.182 that is the value of C p into 38 minus 30. So, that is kilo joule per kg Kelvin C p 4.182 38 minus 30 and this is kilo joule per kg and if we calculate it, it is coming 62.01. So, what we can what we can get from this is m dot w by m dot s 
equal to 62.01 that is kg of water per kg of steam. So, if we need to circulate 1 kg of steam and if we need to get all this that is steam would be at 40 degree Celsius at the condenser outlet then we need to supply 62.01 kg of water. So, that is what is the problem. Now, next is what is you know condenser efficiency. So, next is condenser efficiency. what is this condenser efficiency? If we go back to the previous slide, we can understand that this condenser is provided to reduce the temperature of steam right from you know this saturation temperature at the pressure at 4 to 30 degree, because steam that is coming into the condenser having T sat equal to 53.97 degree Celsius. So, that is the temperature of incoming steam into the condenser and you are supplying water which is available which is available at 30 degree at the uh, uh, exit of the cooling tower. Now, that means, we are supposed to reduce the temperature of steam from this value to 30 degree right. So, that would be the maximum possible reduction of temperature of the steam as it passes through the condenser. So, if we write it then that is the maximum possible reduction in temperature of the flowing steam that is 53.97 minus 30 right. So, this is the maximum possible reduction in temperature of the flowing steam, but instead we had we could reduce from 38 to minus 30. So, essentially you know that water temperature has dropped, water temperature has increased by 8 degree. So, that means, that 8 degree is the you know actual reduction of the steam temperature. So, if we calculate this, then we will be getting this is 33.5 percent. So, this is the condenser efficiency. So, if we try to summarize today's you know discussion, we have discussed about the you know performance of the cooling towers by you know defining three important parameters. We have seen the physical significance of these three parameters, then we have also discussed about that there are certain loss of water as it passes through the cooling tower and that loss of water is also indirectly related to the cooling tower performance. We have identified the possible you know source of those losses also typical value of that uh, you know total loss and then we have solved one problem from the condenser. So, with this I stop here today and we shall continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you. Mm -hmm.